Hey folks, Casey here with Two Tankards. Welcome back to our video series on how to calibrate the M2. Today's video is sponsored by MakerMade, the manufacturer of the M2 CNC. And today we're going to take a look at the Z-axis calibration tab, so stay tuned. Before we start taking our measurements, first let's get our tools lined out. The most important thing you're going to need is a good set of digital calipers. Get some that measure in millimeters. Don't try to use a, a tape measure or anything like that. Use digital calipers to ensure that you get the best accuracy as possible. Second, you're going to need a calculator. iPhone works or whatever phone that you have, that would work just fine. Third, you're going to need a pencil, something that you can mark down your measurements with. And I like to take my measurements and I write them down on my spoil board as I do my calculations to ensure that I just have a good running log of every measurement that I've taken and what that new distance is. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's quickly talk about where we take our measurement from on the M2Z axis. With my digital calipers, I like to measure from this flat spot on this bearing from the top of this bracket. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so using your digital calipers, your digital calipers have three ways that it takes a measurement. When you look at it, when you operate them, it'll take an interior measurement here inside to inside. Down here, it will take an outside to outside. And this part right here, as you slide it, it opens and closes. This takes a depth measurement. This is the side that we'll use. So just close your calipers. Make sure you zero them out, and then I take my calipers, I put the end up next to this component right here, this bracket, and I slide it down until I touch the top of the bearing. Then I'll make a note of what that number is, and I'll write that down. So I click on the Z-axis tab, and I want to check the motion of my Z-axis to see if it's inverted. To do this, I move the z-axis in small increments. First I'll move up and then I'll move down and I note whether the machine is running backwards. If it is, I need to invert my z-axis. I click on the drop down, click yes, and it applies the settings. Once the settings are applied, I try the movement again to ensure it's correct. Once I ensure that the movement is correct, I can now proceed with my calibration. To proceed with my calibrations, I first take a measurement with my calipers as I demonstrated earlier in this video. Then I'll take that measurement, I'll record it and write it down for later use. Now that I have my first measurement, I go into Makerverse and I jog my Z-axis. I usually do this in small 5 millimeter increments. Once I make the move, I take a second measurement. I'll take that number and record it with the first one. I then perform a calculation as above in this picture. This gives me the actual distance traveled. I take the actual distance traveled and I type it into the Z distance moved box. I then click apply scaling. Now Makerverse knows that the Z axis did not move five millimeters, it actually moved more it will scale accordingly in the mathematics behind the software. I then perform this calculation several more times until I get a Z distance move that I am happy with. I like to get less than one millimeter. Now that our Z axis movement is calibrated, we can move on to defining our zero for the Z axis. To zero out our z-axis, we first move in small increments such as one or two millimeters to get the tip of the bit in the router as close as possible to the surface of the spoil board. As you make your moves, you can see the software g-code in the command box. Take a permanent marker and put crosshairs on your pulleys on the z-axis. It will help you see your z-axis movements easier. I can adjust my movement to 0.5 millimeter increments to get even closer. Once I get as close as I can visually, then I can click on the Define Zero button. We can set a proper work home later using a piece of paper. We are now ready to move on to the Chain section. 
All right, folks. Well, that's it for the Z-axis calibration tab. Now we're going to go ahead and get ready and move on to our chain tab. That is the most important tab in this entire section. As always, if you like our content, please click like and subscribe and help support our channel. If you're buying anything from MakerMade, please use our affiliate code right here. Save yourself some coin and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.